Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. You have eight batteries and a flashlight, or torch. Due to a manufacturing defect, exactly four of the batteries are good and functional. The other four are completely malfunctional and won't work at all. However, the good and bad batteries are completely identical and they've been mixed up, so you don't know which batteries are good and which batteries are bad. You do know the flashlight will only work if you have two good batteries. Then the flashlight will turn on. If you have one good battery and one bad battery, the flashlight will not work. Similarly, if you have two bad batteries, the flashlight will not work. You have to identify two of the good batteries. You are allowed to insert two of the batteries inside the flashlight and see if the flashlight is off or if it turns on. This is considered to be one test. So the question is, how many tests are needed to be sure in the worst case that you have two good batteries inserted into the flashlight? For the purposes of this puzzle, include the final test of inserting two good batteries into the flashlight. This problem has been used as an interview question at many technical companies, it has also been an Olympiad question. So it's a wonderful puzzle. Can you figure it out? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So let's work out the puzzle. A good first step is just to come up with a solution that identifies two batteries. In other words, you can estimate to try to find an upper bound or just to find some solution. Your first approach to any mathematical problem doesn't have to be the best way to solve it. However, if your boss tells you to figure something out, it's good to come up with a solution, even if it's not the best way to do it, it's a good starting point. You can build from there. So let's number the batteries going from one to eight. A very basic approach is just to test each battery individually. So let's take battery one and test it against all the other seven batteries. So we'll do one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, and one, eight. Suppose the flashlight is off in all of these cases. What can we conclude? We could definitively say that battery one would have to be bad. If you test one battery against all the others, you know that some of the others would have to be good batteries. So if the flashlight is off in all of the cases, we know that battery one is bad. Then let's just proceed to battery two. Let's test battery two against all the other ones we haven't checked. So we've already checked two against one. So we need to do two against three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two, seven, and two, eight. It is possible the battery is off in all of these cases, and then we could conclude battery two is bad. We then do the same thing with battery three. We would test three, four, three, five, three, six, three, seven, and three, eight. We've already tested three, one, and three, two, so we don't need to do those again. Now, if the flashlight is off in all of these cases, we can then conclude battery three is bad. Then let's do battery four, test it against all the other ones we haven't tested it against. This will be four, five, four, six, four, seven, and four, eight. It is possible the flashlight is off in all of these cases, and then we could conclude battery four is bad. Now we've identified four bad batteries, so the remaining four batteries would have to all be good batteries because we know we have four bad batteries and four good batteries. So we do one final test, which is to put the two batteries inside, which is any pair from five, six, seven, and eight, the flashlight will have to turn on in this case. So how many tests have we performed? When we test one with all of the seven other batteries, that will be seven tests. Now to test battery two, this will be one fewer test, so that'll be six. Testing battery three will be one fewer, which will be five tests. Battery four is a total of four tests. And finally, the final test to get the battery to be put into the flashlight to turn on will be one more test. Summing these all up, seven plus six plus five plus four plus one is equal to 23 tests. 
So this is a large number of tests, but we could at least use this procedure to definitively find an answer. Something is better than nothing. But can we do better? Yes, we can. There is a smarter testing procedure which will get an answer in only eight tests. And this is just one short of the optimal number of seven. So here's how this procedure works. You want to test the batteries in pairs. So test one, two, then three, four, then five, six, and finally test seven, eight. Now let's suppose the flashlight is off in all four of these tests. What can we conclude? We know there has to be at least one bad battery per tested pair. If any of the pairs had two good batteries, the flashlight would turn off. So there has to be at least one bad battery per tested pair. But since there are four bad batteries in total, this means we must have exactly one bad battery per pair. If any of the pairs had two bad batteries, there wouldn't be enough bad batteries to split across all four of the pairs. So since we have exactly one bad battery per pair, the other battery must be a good battery too. So what can we do from here? We know that each pair has one good battery, so if we could pair the good batteries, we would turn the flashlight on. So let's completely test one pair against another pair. This will be four more tests. So let's test one, two against three, four. So the four tests would be one, three, one, four, two, three, and two, four. So let me illustrate how this procedure will work by the final test. Each pair has one bad battery and one good battery. So suppose one is bad, two is good, three is bad, and four is good. Now one, three will have a bad battery, so the flashlight will be off. One, four will also have a bad battery, so the flashlight will be off. 2-3 will have a bad battery in 3, so the flashlight will be off, but 2-4 will be two good batteries, and therefore the flashlight will be on. So this procedure will always work, and instead of doing 23 tests in the first method, this procedure will work in at most 8 tests. So we figured out a solution, and we can do it in a reasonable number of tests. But interestingly, this is not the only way that you can solve the puzzle in 8 tests. So here's another procedure where you can also get the answer in at most eight tests. So instead of splitting up the batteries into pairs, split them up into two groups of four. One group will be one, two, three, four, and the other group will be five, six, seven, eight. In the first group of four, test every pair of batteries. So test one, two, two, three, three, four, four, one, one, three, and two, four. Now it is possible the flashlight is off in all of these cases. But then what can you conclude? You would know there's at most one good battery amongst the four batteries, because if there were two good batteries and you've tested every pair, one of the times the flashlight would turn on. So if the flashlight is off in all of these cases, at most one battery is good, which means at least three batteries are bad. So let's suppose that all four of the batteries are bad. In that case, the remaining four batteries would all have to be good. So you would just need to conduct one more test by pairing up two of the good batteries, the flashlight would turn on. So in the first case, we conducted six tests, then we would need to do one more test, and this will be seven tests total. However, we presume that we had four bad batteries in the group of four. It is possible that we would only have three bad batteries and one good battery would be here. In that case, one bad battery would be in the second group of four. Let's analyze this case. If we had only one good battery in one, two, three, four, it would still be true that the flashlight would be off in all six of the tests. So what do we do in the next group of four? We know we have one bad battery and three good batteries, so let's test two different pairs. If six is the bad battery, when we test five, six, the flashlight will be off. But then when we test seven, eight, the flashlight will turn on. 
Now this procedure will always work when we test in pairs. So here we assume the bad battery was in six, but it would also be true if the bad battery was in five. If instead the bad battery was in seven or eight, then we would still have the flashlight turn on, but it would be in the pair five, six instead of seven, eight. In any case, we figured out a solution. So let's count the number of tests. When we test all pairs of four batteries, there are six tests that we will conduct, and then we need to test two different pairs in the other group, so that'll be two more tests. So six plus two is equal to eight tests in total. So this is another procedure that works in eight tests, and it's different from the first procedure. But this leads us to the next question. Can we do even better than eight tests? Yes, we can. We can solve this in seven tests. So here's the wonderful optimal solution, which is just seven tests. So we're going to divide the batteries up into groups. Let's do one group of three batteries, one, two, three, another group of three batteries, four, five, six, and the final pair of batteries, seven, eight. So in one, two, three, let's test every pair. So this will be one, two, two, three, and three, one. Suppose the flashlight is off in all of these tests. Now in the next group of three, four, five, six, test every pair of batteries. So that's four, five, five, six, and six, four. Suppose the flashlight is off in all of these tests. Now, what can we conclude? Well, if the first three, the flashlight is off, we know that there's at most one good battery between the three, or at least two bad batteries. If there were two good batteries between these three, the flashlight would have turned on. The same logic is true for the next group of three. So in the first group of three, there's at least two bad batteries. In the second group of three, there's at least two bad batteries. Two plus two is equal to four. So we've used all four bad batteries amongst these two groups of three. So if we have failed so far, we know the remaining two batteries must be good because we've used up all the bad batteries. So we just conduct one more test and the flashlight will turn on. To illustrate this, suppose the first group of three has bad batteries in two and three, and one is good. In the next group of three, suppose that batteries four and six are bad, and five is good. We could have failed in all the tests so far, but we've used up all four bad batteries, so seven and eight must be good batteries, and the flashlight will turn on. Now, how many tests have we conducted? The first group of three will be a total of three tests, the second group of three will be three tests, and the final test will be just one more test. Three plus three plus one is a total of seven tests. And this is the optimal number of tests. What an incredible solution. Now, if you're like me, you might have a natural curiosity. Can we do even better than seven tests? Now I've done extensive research on this problem and there are some people who say seven tests is the best, but they don't present the proof of why this is true. So I will definitively say, no, you can't do better than seven tests. Seven tests are required. I scoured the web for all sorts of proofs and many of them are technical using theorems from graph theory. But I did come across a nice proof by Bogomil Kaminsky, which gives an explanation of why seven tests are required. So let's get this started. So we have eight batteries. Represent the eight batteries as nodes of a graph. Represent a test of two batteries by an edge connecting two nodes. We want to prove that with six tests, it is possible that no pair of good batteries have been tested. Translating this into graphs, that means with six edges, it is possible to find four nodes with no edges between them. The proof will be by contradiction. So assume otherwise, at most there's a group of three nodes that have no edges between them. Without loss of generality, let the group be nodes one, two, and three. So let's get started. Let's divide up the batteries into two groups. We have one, two, three, and we have four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's take a look at battery four. If four has no edge to one, two, or three, then one, two, three, four would be a group of four nodes with no edges between them but this would contradict the assumption that there's at most a group of three nodes that have no edges between them. So this is not possible. 
So four must have an edge to one, two, or three. Let's just say it has an edge to one. Now let's take a look at five. If five has no edge to one, two, or three, then one, two, three, five would be a group of four nodes with no edges between them. So five must have an edge to one, two, or three. Let's just say one. Now similarly, each of six, seven, and eight must have at least one edge to nodes one, two, or three. Otherwise, we'd be able to form a group of four nodes that have no edges between them. So this will require connecting three more edges. So we've used five edges in total. Now we only have six edges, so there's only one edge left to connect. So what are the cases here? Suppose the edge connects to one, two, or three. In that case, four, five, six, seven, eight would be a group of five nodes with no edges between them. So let's say we have four connecting to three, then four, five, six, seven, eight would be five nodes with no edges between them, which would contradict the assumption of at most a group of three nodes that have no edges between them. So this is a contradiction. So this would be a problem. We could say that we have four batteries, four, five, six, and seven, and you can see that no pair of good batteries has been tested. So this case can't work out. So if instead the edge connects a pair from four, five, six, seven, eight, so let's say it connects four and five, then we would still have five, six, seven, eight would be a group of four nodes with no edges between them, which is still a contradiction. So we could say that five, six, seven, and eight would be the good batteries and no pair of good batteries has been tested. So in conclusion, six edges is insufficient. You can't figure it out in six tests. You need at least seven tests and we have demonstrated a solution in seven tests. So seven tests is the minimal number. Amazing. Now, just to recap, Here's the procedure for seven tests. We divide the batteries up into three groups. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. In each of the groups of three, compare every pair of batteries. This will be three tests in each group. And with the final pair, just test that out. So we have three tests for the first group, three tests for the second group, and a final test for the last pair. And this will be three plus three plus one, which is seven tests. What an amazing solution. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.